Okay, hello, this is Dr. James, and today we're going to talk about my personal research, more about my personal research and, uh, into psychotronic energy, which I believe is the energy that is uh, responsible for uh, creating life and uh, is the uh, energy that is behind the uh, UFO propulsion systems. And uh, it has it's a new form of energy, and I believe it interacts with matter in very strange ways when you develop high uh, levels of charge. And uh, here is a radiation detector. And we have a, our counter going in the background back here. And uh, what I'm going to do is take a, uh, this is a pellet from a smoke detector, americium, and I'm going to uh, tape that to the front of our radiation detector. So we have a radiation detector here. Here's a window for it. It's a Geiger counter. And we will put our pellet kind of right above it. We'll just tape it into place. And of course, you see when we did that, the count right went sky high. Okay, let's see if we can refocus. Okay, so here's our Geiger counter, <coughs> and uh, we'll just kind of let it count for a while. I want to get a baseline, because uh, whenever you're dealing with statistical things, right, you have to have some kind of baseline, because you got to compare uh, a change that's got to be greater than the standard deviation. And uh, if you uh, have a lot of deviation, then you need a big change or a good baseline to compare to. And so, we'll just let it run for a little bit, get a good baseline. Okay, so psychotronic energy is something that's produced by the body, and I believe you can produce it artificially as well. And uh, it comes out a lot from the palms of your hands. That's why I, I'm able to, some people are able to do telekinesis or watches will stop when they wear them on their wrists uh, but also it's internal and when you breathe out I found there's a very strong amount of psychotronic energy in your breath it's carried by the air and uh, psychotronic energy seems to penetrate into different types of matter and can be carried along with it and it changes the properties of that, that material object and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to affect the properties of radiation, right? So we have, um, well, right? This is radiation. It's got the radiation symbols on there. Of course, americium is radiation as well. And um, so according to orthodox science, radiation is an immutable, unchangeable. Uh, Parameter, you cannot affect it, right? Nothing can affect the decay rate of a radioactive material. And once people are in those type of mindsets where something's impossible, I guess it becomes impossible because they don't ever try, right? So let's, uh, we got a good baseline here. Let's take our meter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to breathe on it and see if we can affect the radiation. Okay, so we have a good baseline going here, and we have our detector with the radiation pellet in front of it, and we will try uh, breathing psychotronic energy onto it to see if we can affect the uh, baseline up there. Okay. Look at that. A huge drop in the level of radiation. Let me make sure it's uh, in focus. So the, the, the level of radiation was at 1928, around there, around 2000, and it dropped to about 1256 
14, 16. Look at that. A huge drop in the radiation level from here to there. Way above standard deviation. And that was from uh, breathing on the uh, detector with psychotronic energy. And it's going to take it a little while for it to recover because the energy uh, travels kind of slow. It kind of conducts back out of it. And so it will recover. But it's going to... Well, we'll, we'll just let it run for a little bit. So anyway... There we go. There's our detector and the radiation level drop. Looks like the radiation level is starting to recover. We'll just let it run for a little bit. And we'll save that data and take a look at it. Okay, so we waited several minutes and it looks like it's back up to around uh, 2,000 counts again. And I believe the time step is... Uh, so this is, this is after 116 points and those are about 10 seconds per, per time step. So. Around a couple minutes, the uh, the tube here, the radiation uh, detector and uh, source have recovered from what happened. Anyway, this is very interesting, and uh, so psychotronic energy does seem to affect uh, the decay rate of radiation. Okay, so let's look at our final data. I was able to export it. Actually, it was a little bit of a pain because um, I forgot that you have to export it as ASCII, and it exported it as um, uh, binary, and I had to decode it. And uh, the way I plotted it, I double plotted the points the way I decoded it. So it's about 12 points per minute. Uh, the original data was 6 points per minute, so, so if you take that into account. Uh, over over the length of the pulse is over uh, from when I breathe on the detector and it has a sudden drop in the radiation until it recovers is about 10-15 um, uh, minutes around there <coughs> if you do the do the calculations is that right yeah because a hundred hundred points is around 10 minutes so I, actually it's less than 10 minutes seven eight minutes something like that but anyway this, this seems to be consistent with uh, a lot of the measurements that I've taken with psychotronic energy. It's, uh, it conducts through material, but it conducts very slowly. Um, you won't find any information out there, uh, not a lot about it. I, like I said, I tried to find Pavlita's notes and they have disappeared. Uh, this information is stuff that they don't want you to know about. They, um, it's a whole new, uh, whole new uh, kind of science whole new branch of science, I should say. It's um, <clears throat> definitely very interesting. And uh, I believe this is uh, directly related to the UFO propulsion systems. That's why I am talking about it under UFOs. So I hope you appreciate this information. It's, uh, I think it's very valuable. Anyway, this is Dr. James, and thanks for watching.